This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Starship updates. More test dates emerging, Starlink is tripled and James Webb fully assembled. First of all, I want to thank John Lampacker for his beautiful renders he allowed me to use on my episodes. Thank you very much for your contribution. There has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. SpaceX is pulling night shifts again, and this can only mean one thing. First tests are closing in rapidly, and the end of the year will be action-packed in Boca Chica. One of the new ring walls is ready. Now comes the moment of truth. Will it be moved? Will it be used where it is? What will it be used for? Starship Mark III or maybe even a super heavy build? We will learn soon. New composite overwrap pressure vessels or short COPVs have been delivered to Boca Chica. No doubt for Starship Mark I and its reaction control system. Starship Mark I will need lots of cold gas thrusters to control its flight path. It's one heavy beast. Another hinge has been delivered. It's still not clear on what they'll be used for, but this makes two. My bet still is on the lower fin hinges, but that's just speculation at the moment. What are your thoughts? Tell me in the comments. And Mark I has had trimming on the top. A small portion of the nose was cut off and taken down by workers, widening the hole on top. Either they need an access point for construction or something is going to be installed in the nose. Either way, another change in the construction plan that was not planned in from the beginning. And the side plumbings are growing and growing. The whole length of the tank section looks very packed now. Loads of cables and tubes running along the side. This shows more and more how much still needs to be done. We can see power lines, tubes likely for hydraulic fluids and data cables being installed. This is where a lot of problems can occur if the installation is not done properly. The loose cable, an engineer's nightmare. And we get more and more information on why SpaceX is in such a hurry. There have been two more FCC filings for planned missions from Boca Chica. Mission 1569 from October 13th to April 13th next year. This filing likely is a correction of an existing filing with some minor word changes. And mission 1570 from November 15th until May 15th next year. Both missions state experimental launch, landing and recovery of the Starship suborbital test vehicle from Boca Chica, Texas as their purpose and both are FCC filings. Meaning that there are not launch dates but permission requests for communication between the ground station and an in-flight Starship. This is a strong indicator for SpaceX wanting to fly starships frequently within the next 7-8 months. A lot to look forward to, I'll as always keep you informed. Starlink tripled in size. Satellite Mega Constellations, a term nobody even knew about a few years ago. These are the times we're living in. Large doesn't even describe these projects anymore. One of these projects is Starlink and Mega fits it quite well. A total of 12,000 satellites planned for orbit insertion, making the project almost three times bigger than all satellites currently operational in Earth orbit. Just recently, SpaceX updated us with new information about the upcoming Starlink V1.1 launch, sending the first wave of production-level Starlink microsats into orbit on board a Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX is targeting a launch no earlier than October 30. Now on these so-called NET dates, you can normally expect a launch to happen within the first two weeks after the date. SpaceX will attempt to land the booster roughly 600 kilometers downrange on their automated drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, and they will also, for the first time, try to catch both fairing halves with their two ships Go Miss Tree and Go Miss Chief. I will definitely livestream the launch, so you can already mark the two weeks on your calendar if you want to join in on the fun. As soon as there is a fixed date, I'll give you an update. So 12,000 is a big number. Never been there before big number, right? What would you say if it wasn't 12,000 but instead 30,000 satellites planned for the Starlink Mega Constellation? On October 7th, the FCC made 20 new filings for satellite orbits, all on behalf of SpaceX. This is a very good example for two technologies converging. 
Starship's launch capabilities, as SpaceX will most likely not be launching 30,000 Starlink satellites with Falcon rockets, and Starlink's capability of bringing a mobile internet connection to every square meter on the planet. Elon Musk stated in interviews before that Starlink will not be able to provide enough bandwidth to compete with ground-based internet providers in densely populated areas. This was true for 12,000 satellites. But would this change with almost three times the amount of satellites? There's one more factor coming into play here. Satellite optimization. Possible throughput will certainly increase over time with later hardware iterations and these improvements in the beginning are normally rather steep. OneWeb, for example, another mega constellation provider, recently announced that their second generation satellites will improve over the first generation by a factor of 10 when it comes to bandwidth. Something like this will happen for Starlink as well, meaning that we might even see broadband internet from SpaceX in the future anywhere we want as long as you can place an antenna. The implications for such a tool are mind-blowing. Airplanes, boats, Teslas, anything that can carry an antenna will have low latency high bandwidth internet capabilities. Want to watch Netflix in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Want to trade stock in Antarctica? All no problem with Starlink. And there is one more information I want to give you before we go over to the next topic. When Starlink is mentioned, there is always word about others planning the same thing. Like for example OneWeb in this episode. Do not be fooled by this though. No one is planning anything like SpaceX is. Besides OneWeb, there are two other companies planning a mega constellation. Telesat and Amazon. OneWeb is planning for 600 satellites, Teleset for 292 and the mighty Amazon for 3236. Even though these numbers sound impressive, that is a very small second, third and fourth place compared to 12,000 satellites from SpaceX, let alone 30,000. So again, Musk is just going for much, much more than the competition. And again, it's just because he doesn't seem to care about financial or technological risks. He's just making it happen, leapfrogging yet another industry in the process. Starlink will produce a huge revenue stream, partly used for Starship and subsequently for colonizing Mars. So basically soon you'll be texting to fund Martians. What a wonderful world. James Webb fully assembled for the first time. The James Webb Space Telescope. Just another delayed mission or a breakthrough science project? If you look at the numbers, it is hard not to start another rant about wasted taxpayers' money and political snail pace. But if you look at the scientific implications, it's hard not to dream about what it could achieve. I will hopefully do an in-depth episode about James Webb in the future collaborating with someone you could definitely call an expert when it comes to Webb. So I won't go into too much detail on today's show, but when you think of delays and billions over budget, keep in mind that JWST is a completely new approach with lots of new technologies involved that did not exist prior to the project. And this project is now finally nearing completion. With its development started in 1996 and an original launch date slated for 2007, Webb is very late to say the least. But good things take time. With NASA primarily responsible for development and with significant contributions from ASA and the Canadian Space Agency, Webb is no exception from the rule. Most large space-related science projects are an international effort. Recently, NASA accomplished yet another milestone on the way to the proposed launch date on March 30th in 2021. Until the Ariane 5 launch, there's not much left to do now. The main components have been tested for 100 days in Chamber A at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston at the end of 2017 to see how the telescope behaves in near-vacuum conditions at cryogenic temperatures and it passed the tests. 2018 and 2019 were mainly focused on integrating the different components and now, in August this year, Webb was completely assembled for the first time with all major parts attached. And this milestone was passed as well. Next up, for web testing, engineers will fully deploy the intricate sun shield, which is designed to keep Webb's mirrors and scientific instruments cold by blocking infrared light from the Earth, Moon and the Sun. The ability of the sun shield to deploy to its correct shape is critical to mission success. The five-layer shield is constructed from polyimide film with membranes coated with aluminum on one side and silicon on the other. Accidental tears of the delicate film structure during testing have been one of the reasons for delays of the project. 
Due to payload fairing restraints of the Ariane 5 rocket, the sun shield is designed to be folded 12 times. This makes the construction even more complicated. Once deployed at the Lagrange 2 point in a permanent Earth shadow, it will unfold to 21 by 14 meters. The sun shield was hand assembled at Mantec in Huntsville, Alabama. I hope this gave you a good insight into the mission status until my What About It in-depth episode about James Webb arrives. As always, I'll keep you informed about any future delays to the mission. Let's hope there are none left until 2021. Since we cannot travel to other stars yet, most of the research done outside of our solar system is based on astronomy and millions of telescopes are pointed at the stars each night. From the small hobby astronomer to the fast or 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope, the biggest radio telescope in the world. And yes, I have a telescope too. Have you ever wanted to understand what astronomy is all about or had the dream of maybe investing some money and taking your first own peek at Mars and what lies beyond? If so, check out Brilliant.org's excellent astronomy course. With its 30 interactive puzzles and over 330 concepts and exercises, it is packed with knowledge about one of the most interesting fields of science. You'll discover a world of cosmic wonders, follow a star from diffuse nebula to dense star remnant, and traverse the scales of space and time from planetary to intergalactic. If you understand astronomy, you understand the universe. To become an aspiring astronomer and at the same time help What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up for free to get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Try brilliant.org, it's definitely worth it, link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. What will you use a Starlink connection for and what do you think about James Webb? Is the delay acceptable? As always, tell me in the comments. All this would not be possible without my patrons. Constantly busy in the background, giving me ideas, helping with organization or just keeping the constant conversation going on our Discord. If you want to be part of the team, consider joining for just $1 per month and get involved. And again, I have another supporter to give a shout out to. Thank you very much, Jennifer Tennant, and don't forget to join our Discord. I want to thank you in person. You rock. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to like and subscribe as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content, as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. These are the times we're living in. Large, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to laugh. <laughs> Refund stream. Yeah, no, hopefully not. No, you're not going to be texting Martians. Ah! <laughs> Conditions at cryogenic temperature. Boom. In August. Jawohl.